This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Inamur Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. And now, here's your host, Inamar Shafir. Welcome to the Umbrella Marketing Podcast, where we talk with successful marketing experts about ways to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Our guest today has been called America's leading LinkedIn coach by Perry Marshall. He wrote the ultimate guide to LinkedIn for businesses, how to get connected with 150 million customers in 10 minutes. We're going to ask him about that. An Amazon bestseller. I'm excited to say hello to Mr. Ted Prodrumo. Ted, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Did I say your last name right? Prodromo. Very close. You're very close. (laughs) Uh, So obviously the first question is, how do you get connected to 150 million customers in 10 minutes? But before we jump into that, which I know all the listeners want to know, why don't you tell us a little bit about how how you got into this business? Yeah, well, it's a crazy story. (laughs) I spent 20 years in the tech world, and it was just the best career ever. I was like the first network manager at Cellular One when they had like less than 10,000 phone subscribers. Wow. I was like employee number 40. So I I got in computer networking as it was just being invented. It's like, I remember one day thinking, I had the best career. I'll never have to worry about my career ever. And then the dot-com crash hit, wiped out 20 year career. And so I got certified as a coach. It was like a whole career change because I love mentoring my employees. And I said, I got certified as a coach. Like, all right, I can help all these tech workers transition into a new career. I didn't know how to market or sell. So I started learning marketing, went to Dan Kennedy conferences, met Perry Marshall, who taught me Google AdWords. I had a small agency for quite a long time. And 2008 came, blew that baby up. (laughs) (laughs) Then I got a job at 52 years old as an online marketing manager for a software company in 2000, right after the crash, 2009. So in three and a half years, we went from 25 million to 150 million. So they laid us off, brought in an agency. (laughs) (laughs) So here I am today. Now I'm a LinkedIn expert. (laughs) (laughs) But... But you're not just a LinkedIn expert, right? You wrote the book about it. Uh, uh, You have helped many, many people be successful on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, you describe a beautiful story. We talked about it before we started the podcast, uh, Ted and I, that we see a lot of people past corporate thrown into independent or maybe chosen to go into independent and are now setting up their own course in life and Ted is helping a lot of those uh, with their uh, marketing and LinkedIn. And so, so Ted, how do you get to 150 million customers in 10 minutes? I wanna know, I wanna get to 150 million customers. <laughs> so that's how much has changed. That tagline is on my book, The Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business. And now LinkedIn has 750 million members. So nice. that and they're growing so fast right now, faster than ever since the Microsoft acquisition in 2016. Oh, really? So Microsoft did actually do something right this time? It worked? Yeah, they left them alone. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, actually, what Microsoft's doing, they're integrating with Office 365, the subscription service. Mm. So if you Amazing. use like Outlook or Office 365, now they call it just Office. If you hover over my name that I sent you an email, my LinkedIn profile pops up now. So I don't have to go over to LinkedIn. So if I'm going to have a meeting with you, I could just look right from my email and get a little summary of what you do. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. So so you you had an agency. You did PPC. You did SEO. You probably did other agency stuff. Uh, then you positioned sites, the usual or, stuff. The usual stuff. Um Obviously, they're money makers. We have a lot of agencies that are doing well with those kind of services, and everybody needs them. What made you make the jump specifically into LinkedIn? Uh, well, at the time, I was using LinkedIn, and it was very different, you know, 10 years ago, obviously. 
Mm-hmm. So I was getting business from it that way. And then when the, uh, most of my clients were very small businesses and when 2008 hit, they, most of them, a lot of them went out of business or they just stopped spending money on marketing. So I, like, I was like, holy crap, I've got two kids in college. What am I going to do? I went to Craigslist and I saw an ad for an online marketing manager. And I sent my resume, which I did hundreds of times before. They actually responded. <laughs> and I got the job and it was only, it was like very close, about 10 minutes from my house. And it was a content management software company. And it was just, it was great because I was spending like 50,000 a week on Google ads. We were driving leads to them. They were growing like crazy during the worst economy. And it just, it was great until they said, hey, sorry, we're bringing a new agency because well, we're going to go to a whole new level. Like yeah. there's only eight of us in marketing. We're like, really? We just quadrupled your revenue during the worst <laughs> economy. And they said, sorry, you're out of here. No stock options, no nothing. And But but what made you jump specifically into LinkedIn? Did you, you saw something there that you thought it was a gold mine more than Facebook, more than staying in PPC, SEO? Because now yeah. you're focused on LinkedIn. Now, the, really, it was the Perry Marshall connection again. I was in his mastermind, his roundtable, and he wrote, ultimate guide to Facebook advertising, ultimate guide to Google AdWords for Entrepreneur Press. They're the best-selling books ever, even better than the Dan Kennedy books. Hmm. So they said, hey, we need a LinkedIn book and a Twitter book, Perry. So he reached out to me because I knew I did social media. So we were supposed to co-author the books. And then the last minute goes, Perry goes, well, you know, I don't have a LinkedIn account, so you just write that book. (laughs) (laughs) And that's how I really went full time. That was like nine years ago, I wrote that first book. And from that point on, you're, have been, you, you've been mainly focused on LinkedIn, right? I teach people to engage on LinkedIn and get people over to your website and get them on your email list and nurture them from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So and we do still- little LinkedIn ads for bigger companies, but for the most part, it's about engaging with people on LinkedIn and getting them to your website one way or another to get on your email list. Okay, so one of the things we love to do in the Marketing Umbrella podcast is give the listeners some practical advice. So if you can give us maybe three or five must-do steps, uh, maybe it's only two, I don't know, that the listeners can take today to increase visibility, increase the chances of people connecting with them and buying from them, what would that be? So one thing people, when you first got on LinkedIn, they take you through that little setup wizard and you're basically building your resume on there. So that's all, you know, it's all about you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So your profile is now where you work, blah, blah, blah. So that's yep. great if you're looking for a job because you focus on you. But if you're trying to get business from LinkedIn, you got to flip it around. What's in it for the reader? So people have a really hard time grasping that concept. Like they don't care where you went to school or how many years you've been in business. They have a problem and you can solve that problem. So I teach people to make their, basically a sales letter out of their head profile. The headline under your name has to be a compelling to get them to stop scrolling. And probably 95% of headlines on LinkedIn are your job title. CEO of XYZ Corporation or whatever. (laughs) And it's boring and people are just going to scroll right past it. But if you treat it like a book title, so you're on Amazon or when you used to be able to go to bookstores, a book would catch your attention. You'd pick it up, you'd read the title, then you'd open up the book and the inside flap tells a story about the book. It's not the book yet. It's telling you a story about the book, making you want to buy the book. Mm. So if you make Mm -hmm. your about section like that inside flap, talk about the problem they're having, paint that picture of how things could be if we solve this problem. Then you talk about your own struggles. I talk about my failures in my business. My business went under. My career went under. And then I rebuilt three times. So I actually... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I wanted to say... What you just said about describing, you know, what happened to you. I heard it from another LinkedIn expert. She told me, you have to be authentic. You need to find your voice. Yes. Would you agree with that? 100%. You can't use the buzzwords. You can't use, just tell your story. Talk about your failures and how you recovered. 
Because people think, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. I get so many people reach out. Oh, man, I got laid off in 2001. Never could find a job again or whatever. Right. So right. from that vulnerability and authenticity, it starts a connection with people and they trust you more. Okay. So one is writing the right title, writing of the right about me section that is actually geared towards them and not about you per se. Right. Finding your voice, be authentic. Don't use buzzword. Don't just describe your services. Right. Okay. So, so that's, that's okay. If they're looking for me, this is how they're not going to skip. Right. But how do I get them to look at me to begin with? Like, how do I get traffic on LinkedIn, if you will? So most people don't realize this, but your profile is being shown to thousands of people every day. So if you're looking at someone's profile in the right column, it says people also viewed, or they've also added people you may know back. Mm -hmm. So your, your name, your picture, and your headline are showing up in front of thousands of people every day on that sidebar. And also when you go to my network and you accept people's invitations, LinkedIn prompts you to say, hey, here's more people you may know from where you went mm -hmm. to school, what industry you're in. So literally that little snippet is shown to thousands of people every day. So be treated like an ad and get people, I learned it from Perry Marshall for the Google ad. You're not selling your services with the ad, you're selling the click. You wanna get people to click on your ad, then they go to a landing page and learn about your offer. So if you can get people to click on your profile snippet, they're going to go to your about section and learn more about you. And now they've added in there the featured section. You can post lots of content there now. So people can really get to know you just by skimming through your profile. Okay. And so that's, that's perfect advice. Thank you. And if I want to be more proactive, if I want to say, okay, I'm getting X amount of traffic through that smart profile that Ted helped me build. And now I want to scale that 10 X. Yeah. What do I do? Do paid ads? Like, what do I do? Ads are very expensive on LinkedIn. You have to have an offer that's ten to $20,000 in value at least. Hmm. So a, yeah, it's getting so more ads. and more expensive. <laughs> but, you know, you, you can do it if you have good offers or long-term value for your clients. If you have a client that's worth $50,000 average lifetime value, sure, run ads. It's one to many. One right. mistake I'm seeing, people treat LinkedIn like it's a one-to-many platform. So they get the software. There's a software you can blast messages at people. And there's canned, boring messages. And when I work with clients, I say, so let's first read your profile out loud to me, your headline and your about section. And they go, oh, my God, that's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> then they send messages and uh, most of my competitors teach this here's all these templated messages you can blast at people and it's you know i said Do, would you say that to me if we were having a cup of coffee together or having right. lunch together like no i don't speak like that it's like well then why are you sending these linkedin messages at people not conversing having conversations with people Completely. And they said, well, I don't have time to have conversations with people and build relationships. Like, well, how do you feel when you get a robo call? You know, <laughs> it just makes you angry. If you, that's how you treat your business, you're not going to get good clients. Right, right. But, you know, that statement, you hear it a lot from small business owners because the truth of the matter is small business owners, unless they have a very nailed down process or the perfect team, and I'm talking small, not, you know, large enough and making money enough to have a manager for each bucket that they need to operate their systems. They're wearing tons of hats, yeah. doing marketing, getting on sales calls, helping clients, doing some fulfillment, you know, term, you know, whatever fires uh, that they need to deal with on a nonstop basis. And you think about creating relationship and you think about, wow, the, the minute you hear relationship, you hear time. Because you know from your personal experience, hey, it took me time to find my good friends or my wife or whatever. Like it's a, a, a huge time investment. How do I do it? Like what's the trick? Now, the time you invested to get your wife and to get married, was that time worth it? Yes, very much. <laughs> I hope she's listening. The best time ever. Uh, most valued. Uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. It was, of course. Of course it was. Yeah. So the thing with LinkedIn, there's 750 million 
members right now. 60% don't log in more than once or twice a year even. Hmm. There's 40% that are active users. So those are people that are you know, on there every day. So what I do is I look for content that my best clients would read. And I go to that content and I engage with those people. So if you posted something and you got 100 comments on it, I would go through the comments and, and reach out to those people, you know, engage with them hmm. and the person that posted the content, write a thoughtful, actually read their article you know, and say, right. hey, I really like what you said about, and mention something very specific. And you start conversations with everybody that's engaged with that content. Then you invite them to connect because you know they're interested in that topic. Right. Otherwise, yeah. if you're just blasting messages and invitations at random people, most of the time they won't even ever see it because they don't log in enough. Hmm. And how do you how do you find that content? Is there a way to search for it on LinkedIn? Yeah, you can just search for posts now. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you're looking for content marketing advice, you can type in content marketing and click the filter for posts. You'll see all the latest things that have been posted. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. And so, so you know these are the active users. They're interested in that topic. And you start conversations. That's a, you know, It takes 10 or 15 minutes a day to engage with the three or four posts. Then I usually go through, and if I'm not connected with the people that are engaging, I'll say, hey, I really like what you said about Joe's article. Mm -hmm. And they'll accept your invitation every time because you're complimenting them. Yeah. And you just start yeah. a little conversation like you met at a conference or you meet at a networking event. Just get to know each other. And do any clients come to you and say, you know what, Ted, this sounds amazing. You're an expert at it. You know, why don't you just do it for me? You know what we do. You know, why don't you, you know, we put, take a title, be whatever, the VP or the head of marketing and get on LinkedIn and, you know, create relationship and sales for us. Like, is that feasible? You know, a lot of people try it. It's, you can do it. But if I wanted to generate business for your business and I wanted to pretend I'm you, I don't really know your values. I don't know all the intricacies of you, your personality and who right. you're really looking for. So we can send some generic messages to people to start conversations. And then you'd have to jump into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like the Dean Jackson nine word email. Have you ever heard of that? No, I, I, I have, but I don't remember what, 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 it, what it is. Basically he asks these intriguing questions. So if you're a realtor, his are like, are you still looking for a house in West Palm beach? Right. And if people are interested, yeah, they reply. Yeah, yeah. He actually adds the word still to it. Are you still looking? So then I can, how did he know I was still looking? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to get their attention and pique their interest. Yeah, yeah. But to pretend you I'm still... you and try to engage with people as you. A lot no, of my no, competitors no. do that. But it's yeah. sending just those generic, boring messages. But at the end of the day, okay. So let's say some of the agencies that are listening to us are thinking, okay, I want to develop a LinkedIn service. Uh, would they come to you and not just learn how to do LinkedIn, but also how to, how to learn how to do LinkedIn for their own clients? Yeah. It's basically you have to engage on a one-on-one -on -one level to get individual clients or you run the ads, which is one to many. So you can target those companies you want to work with and post good content. Like video content works great on LinkedIn. Events are working like crazy right now. They're working really well. So what's an event on LinkedIn? Is that like a webinar? Like yeah, a, so if you're going like to do a webinar, webinar, you can go in the left-hand column of the homepage. There's a little thing hidden down way at the bottom called events. And you can create a free event on LinkedIn. And then you can invite up to a thousand of your first level connections in a week to attend that event. Nice. So it's you know, manual, nice. you have to click and invite people. But when people sign up, they seem to show up hmm. more than just a generic webinar invitation. Right. And does, does it have to be, does it have to be people I'm connected to? Uh, yeah, you can, they're going to add it so you can run uh, ads to it too, like boost a post on Facebook. Right. 
that's coming any day now from the ad service. Otherwise you have to create a, a little post on your company page and then you can sponsor that and push it out to second and third level connections. Amazing. Okay, yeah. cool. And it's so, like three to $5 a click is what I've been experiencing, which isn't that terrible to promote an event. Yeah, I, click is not the end of the world, depending what's the conversion rate on, you know, if they actually sign up, if it's, you know, yeah. five bucks per registration, that's okay. It's five thousand dollars for a thousand people registering. Actually, not bad at all. Right. This podcast is brought to you by Umbrella. Have an agency? Check out umbrellaus.com to grow it today. Um, especially you know if it's LinkedIn folks, you know they're active. And they have those audiences now, like Facebook. So you can set it up so everybody that goes to the landing page. They go into that bucket, one audience, like visited landing page, and then you can have all the ones that are hit the thank you page. Then you can retarget the people that didn't convert yet. Oh, nice. So LinkedIn then, has retargeting now. Wow. And then you have to come in live, right, though? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And is that something you're already doing? Those events? Yeah, we've been doing that for a lot of clients lately. A couple of financializers, they're doing... They do webinars and then we get people to the webinar and they sell like twenty five dollars to $50,000 coaching packages. Mm -hmm. They're paying about $25 to $30 of registration for the webinar, but they're getting nice. their email address and the email address comes from the LinkedIn contact data. So you know it's a valid email address. Right, right. So there's no fake email addresses being entered into there. <laughs> That's actually, that's a huge, huge moneymaker potential. Uh, you're talking, you know, the webinar industry, especially for marketers, you know, all the agencies listening to us, uh, you know, doing online events, whether it's mainly webinars or people are doing live Facebook and now live LinkedIn, it makes so much sense. Uh, and, and again, for those high ticket clients, it's even easier to make those decisions. Yeah, of course I'm going to spend. And you can drive people to the automated webinar still too, using the LinkedIn events. Oh, really? Yeah. So how do you do that? You mean like the ever webinars and those kind of systems? Yeah. One of the clients I have, he works with very high end clients. He's, he works with dentists and he basically dentists burn out pretty quickly in their career. So he teaches them how to take their profits and invest in real estate. Hmm. So they're diversifying so they can retire younger. Wow. He sends them to like an ever webinar, automated webinar. And he has like a 25 to $50,000 coaching package too. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So, so let's, let's recap a little bit. We're talking about a, you want to make sure that your title is enticing. You want to make sure that your about is about them and it's enticing. And right. you want to make sure that the voice and everything you're writing is authentic and it's you. Then you're getting free traffic just because LinkedIn is promoting your profile to people in your industry and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then you can also expand that traffic by doing paid campaigns we talked about some paid campaigns right. and is there also an organic way to get more traffic on linkedin uh just by posting content on linkededin and right. working and with this we can do uh basically don't over post on linkedin i have a friend that's really studying the algorithm and i used to have five to ten posts a day automated going on there like excerpts from my book Articles from Forbes, you know, late you know, current articles. Yeah. They figured out you should only post no more than once a day on LinkedIn. Hmm. Maybe three or four times a week is actually optimal. And they've studied this through thousands of profiles and content tests. It's actually very important. So if you post something and it's getting some good traction and you post a second post, it stops promoting the first post. The, hmm. guy, the algorithm just kills it. Wow. Yeah. That's you know, those things are so important. I'm sure the listeners appreciate those advices so much, Ted, because these are things people engage on LinkedIn all the time. They don't know these things and they don't know the, the, the potential. Like they know LinkedIn has potential, but they don't know all the nitty gritty little details that you need to actually extract uh, money from that potential, make that potential a reality. Right. Um, so, 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 so that's great. And I think, I think we, we covered a lot of things um, about LinkedIn. 
I'm, I'm sure, you know, if people just implement what we talked about, they'll be in a better place altogether. And by going in and reading your book and maybe joining your courses, they can even be in a better place. Uh, tell me, did you also see a rise or a, did you see a rise or a slowdown during last year, COVID? Uh, because digital marketing kind of saw a spike, but at the same time, I know a lot of agencies suffered. Last year was a huge year for LinkedIn. It's actually 40% increase in revenue each quarter last year. Wow. And the amount of engagement was up 30 to 40% each quarter. Because I spoke in Denver in 2002, 2020 in February, before the pandemic really hit. And a lot of coaches were there. So I did a LinkedIn search. There's 2.3 million coaches on LinkedIn. Wow. Last December, there was 6 million coaches. And now there's 6.5 million. <laughs> and I found out with consultants, there's now 23 million consultants on LinkedIn. Jeez. So the pivot last year was incredible for people that, you know, their corporate jobs ended. So LinkedIn's on fire right now. So I, you know, I'm really talking about people. You need to differentiate yourself from what kind of coach are you? <laughs> there's right. 6.5 million of you. You got to be very specific in your professional headline or people just going to scroll right by. Yeah. 60% of LinkedIn users are mobile only. So they're looking on the small screen. Right. So you need to be much more, you need to be a wordsmith. You need to be very good. With <laughs> yeah. 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 Very good. Uh, so it's being a LinkedIn coach is obviously pandemic proof. As, uh, as, uh, as you well, say. I've got a lot of competition now since the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's true. It's true. Um, I get solicited on LinkedIn a lot. Not so much for learn how to do LinkedIn, but more for we can get you leads. Okay? I get a lot of um, uh, solicitation about lead generation on LinkedIn and I know, I know it's a legitimate thing. Like I know you can generate a lot of leads on LinkedIn, but do you have any tips for, you know, when, when you're getting those kind of solicitations, what could be a legitimate course for you and what, you know, you should just say, no, this is, you know, just those people won't work for me. Oh, and they use all of, you know, the buzzwords, I'll 10 X your leads or I'll give you a hundred leads a week. I'm like, do I really need a hundred leads a week or should I get better at selling? <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem in of itself. You, what would you do with a hundred leads? You couldn't possibly <laughs> talk to a hundred people in a meaningful way. So if it's it sounds too good to be true when they're invitation, I ignore them now, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That's I'm looking for the point. kind of the similar people you are, the quality over quantity. I'd rather work with 10 really great clients than a hundred clients that just drive you crazy <laughs> i and i and i think everybody that is listening to you right now agrees uh and and you the point you made now i, I want to re-emphasize it what you said about the fact that what would you do with 100 leads what would you do with you know 100 appointments you can barely have five co solid conversations a week and that's a great point, you know, for all of us looking to get more and more and more. And instead of that, maybe building a better funnel, getting more quality and getting the people we really want. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate that point. So yeah, you got to differentiate yourself from your competitors because, you know, all web agencies, how many thousand web agencies are out there now? Hundreds of thousands just in the States. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, by the way, a lot of people don't call themselves agencies. They call themselves marketing consultants. But in essence, kind of providing the same kind of services. Yeah. Um, yeah. I stopped using the word coach because now it's so diluted. I got certified as a coach in 2001, and it was a real certification. Mm -hmm. Now there's like millions of coaches on LinkedIn. So you differentiate yourself. You're more of an expert or an advisor or be different than your competitors. Yeah. Yeah, that's the theme that uh, is very important. I hear it from you. Um, be be authentic, be unique. Stop the scroll. Write something. Other people don't. Be something else. Uh, but you know, people think for themselves. But hey, I'm not something else. I'm just good at what I do. And I'm good at doing SEO. Like that's it. That's you know, and, and that's good. 
I need a good SEO person. A lot of people do. Right. So it's something people need. How do you take that and actually make it unique without sounding too cheesy, without, you know, using the buzzwords? Because what the guy wants to write on his LinkedIn is, I do very good SEO. I've been doing it for 20 years. I do it very, very well. Hire me. Right. Um, and like how much time do you spend helping people actually find their voice and their unique brand positioning? That's huge. And it's really hard to do. It really, it really, I'm going through it right now with my own business because there's so many LinkedIn experts out there now, quote unquote experts. Like if you look at their profile, they were in a whole nother industry six months ago, but <laughs> now they're a LinkedIn expert. Right. So you kind right. of dig into like, who do you really love working with? Who are your best clients? The old 80, 20, take your 80% of your revenue comes to your top 20% of your clients. So dig into that. I found this really good tool, Spark Toro. Yeah. 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 We, we had uh, Rand uh, uh, Fisher on the, on the podcast. Yeah. I belonged to Fisher. SEO Moz for years when he was really doing that. Because I was yeah. an SEO guy years ago. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that helps you go find the conversations people are having. Like what problems they're having. So you can really tell your, tell your message to resonate with them. Mm -hmm. so there's lots of those tools out there now. SEM Rush has really upgraded lately. Hmm. It lets you search really? for content now and conversations online. Oh, really? Nice. So you can go find out exactly who you're, you know, what age group of people are. I like to work with people that are over 45 because they've got the seizing, they've been through the corporate world, they know what they're doing, and they have money to spend usually. Right. Right, so you right. kind of find what they're talking about online and start those conversations with them and create content that they're going to enjoy. Exactly. I kind of so, take the anti approach too. like right now, my professional headline on LinkedIn, I talk about how are those templated LinkedIn messages working for you? <laughs> then I go into a rant in my about section, hey, rant, I say, oh, rant, <laughs> this is hurting your brand. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's that's another excellent point. So finding your target audience, really investing in it, using tools like SparkToro and SEMrush uh, to actually find what people are talking about, pinpoint your audience. Then you know how to make yourself a little bit more unique. Then you're at a different level than everybody else because everybody else sounds the same, look the same, and don't break the noise. Uh, so that's that's another great advice, Ted. So I think you know you gave an ocean of tips and advices today that are really helpful. Uh, we usually conclude every podcast with a rapid Q&A. And I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to answer fast. If any question seems too much for you, you can just say pass. Okay. It's not okay. very, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, you shouldn't worry about it, but if it is, you, you know, feel free. Okay. You ready? No, you're stressing me out. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I build it up too much. I just there. I think there is one question. One question no, that's that is okay. not that kidding. is not PC. But but you know you can decide if you want to skip or not. Uh, like would you eat dogs? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but but that that's not the question. So I'm gonna start now. Uh, did you get along with your parents growing up? Oh yeah, my parents owned a restaurant, so we worked together all the time. Do you have siblings? Yes. Two sisters. Do you, a, do you have a pet? We have a dog, a lab. Uh, do you have kids? I have two. How old were you when your first kid was born? 30. When do you wake up? 5 a.m. When do you go to bed? About 10 a.m. I'm 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be... <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, that's an issue uh, with reality. A lot, uh, no. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 10 p.m., that's good. When do you, uh, what's your ideal vacation? Uh, mountains or the beach. I like them both. Are you a man of faith? Not really. Okay. So that's it. Those are the questions. So I really want to thank you, Ted, really very much for being on the show and providing so much value uh, to the listeners today, really a ton of value. 
And guys, you can buy Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for businesses, how to get connected with 150 million customers in 10 minutes on Amazon, right, Ted? Yep. It's a bestseller. It's a great read, and it will take you to the first level. Uh, and you can always uh, search for Ted on Google and uh, also go to his website. He has a ton of great content. Thank you, Ted. Hey, thanks for having me. This has been fun. Thank you for tuning into another episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Your host has been Inamar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com.